All right, and now for number nine, we have that the function f is defined by this whole thing. Okay, part a, find that. What the hell is that? When they write it like this, that will make reference to the derivative. So that is actually the derivative of f. Okay, another way in which you might see it was like that. Okay, so it's your function f doing the derivative of in respects to x. See? So yeah, there's a couple different ways you can see it. You might also see it like this. d of f, d of x. Okay, I'm just very used to seeing that symbol like that. Maybe it's just a fancy d, I have no idea. All right, but fuck it. Those are the kind of things you can encounter. All right, so part a is just asking for the deriv derivative. Now, thankfully, at the IB math, AI SL level, uh, the only derivative we're going to be encountering is the exponents one. See, so as long as you and under law, as long as you understand the exponents one, you will be good to go. So let's go with the simplest example first before jumping into part A. If I have f of x equals x squared, okay, the derivative of this is going to be that you take the number up top. Put it down in front and do a minus one. Dead ass. So I put the one on top, I put it in front, and I do a minus one. So two minus one is going to be just one, which is the same as just two x. See? Yeah, that is the derivative of x squared. And so what is the kind of shit that can happen? Well, let's say that from before I had like a I don't know, let's say instead of being like this here, see, instead of being like this, I have, say, 2x squared, see? So that means I'm going to have this 2 coming down in front, so that means I have 2 times 2. That means this would be 4. Okay? And lastly, if this instead of 2 were, say, 3, that means this guy is going to be 3. That means that 3 minus 1 is going to be 2. That means I end up with 4x squared. Alright, so that is for the derivative, like just in general, cierto, of the exponent. See? And so for part A, they immediately, because they're the IB, they immediately throw us a curveball. f of x has an x on the bottom. Dang, bro, what the hell do you do with an x on the bottom? Alright, so part A. There ain't no mountain high enough, right boys? Come on. 2 divided by x plus 3x squared minus 3. So before, notice, notice my language, before you do the derivative, if you ever have a variable on the bottom, do this right away. Okay, don't make it hard on yourself. Especially if you're doing a derivative, do this. See? Um, another way to write that is to put 2 times x to the power of negative 1. So right now, I haven't actually changed anything. I just changed how it looks like. Okay, but it's still the same number. This x being on the bottom is the same as x to the power of negative 1. If you're confused, I have no idea what the hell is going on. Let me show you a math pattern. See, I'm a little bit of a nerd, so you're going to have to deal with me. All right. Um, 2 to the power of 3, how much is it? 2 times 2 times 2, very good. 8. 2 squared, 2 times 2, 4. 2 to the power of 1, 2. 2 to the power of 0, ah. 2 to the power of 0 is 1. Okay. 2 to the power of negative 1 is 1 over 2. 2 to the power of negative 2 is 1 over 4. Okay, there's a couple different ways to like sort of remember. Oops. <laughs> there's a couple different ways to remember this pattern. Okay. The one that I like the most is to notice that as my exponent is decreasing, see, by 1, what am I always doing? I am actually dividing by 2. Dividing by 2. 
dividing by 2. And that is also why, flash lesson, anything to the power of 0 is going to be 1. Because by dividing by itself, it will always reach 1. See? And so when you have a negative exponent, really you're just dividing by 2 in a weird sort of way. See? In this case, it's by 2 because my base is 2. Cierto? I'm talking about this guy here. Like I divide by 2 because this is 2. But if it were 3, I would divide by 3, etc. If you want to go back up, you multiply. See? By your base. Okay, so that is just a flash lesson on exponents and that sort of pattern that shows up and so that is why if you have an exponent on the bottom to put it up top you just do the negative exponent see awesome i'm going to show you one more thing i don't think you're going to counter this but if you ever do now you know see if you have that f of x is i don't know four divided by x squared what would this be writing it in the form that we just did well, the 4 stays up top. And if I want to put this on top, it would be x to the power of negative 2. See? And so the negative is sort of what makes it flip. Okay? As long as I have negative, it's going to be flipped. All right? So, yeah. Um, now that we have that in mind, we can do the derivative more easily. So if I apply the derivative now, all right, this negative 1 is coming down to the is going to multiply on the bottom, so it's going to be negative 1 times 2. This x is going to be negative 1 to the power of negative 1 minus 1, see? This 2 is going to come down to the 3, so it's going to be 3 times 2. x to the power of 2 minus 1. And this negative 3, what happens? It just, it, it turns into 0, see? That is something that derivatives itself have that you need to keep in mind if you ever have what they call a constant okay if you ever have a constant and you're doing a derivative that constant pretty much disappears see that is because this guy is not accompanied by an x or anything likewise and so this three just disappears okay that is a rule of thumb when you do the derivative you only really care if your term has you know the variable you're doing the derivative of. So if in this case it doesn't have an x, you consider it a constant and it's just going to be plus 0 once you do the derivative. Okay? And so this negative 3, technically, we don't really care about. Alright, so I keep going. See? This negative 1 times 2 is going to be negative 2. This x to the power of negative 1 minus 1 is going to be x to the power of negative 2. Uh, plus 3 times 2 is going to be 6 to the power of x, oh, sorry, with x to the power of 2 minus 1, which is just going to be 1, see? Which is the same as putting nothing. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the derivative of part A. If you want to leave it how it was originally, you put this down in the bottom, cierto? Which would be negative 2 divided by x squared, see? Plus 6x. All right, so now I hope you understand a little bit better what happens when the exponent is negative. See? You just kind of like throw it on the bottom or throw it up top, depending on the scenario. All right, that is part A. Part B is really weird. Okay, I'm just going to say that right now. It is really weird. It says to find the equation of the normal to the curve. God dang, bro. Of the normal to the curve. So, what is the normal to the curve? Um, this, I'm just going to assume, looks a little bit like a parabola, okay? I'm, what I'm about to do now is really to explain what normal to the curve means, okay? So you can have x and y. Let's say you have a line that looks, I don't know, whatever, like this. And I say, find the normal to the curve at x equals... I don't know, 3, okay? This is different from the example. This is just to make a point, okay? And let's say that my 3 is going to be uh, here, okay? Yeah, but so if x equals 3 is here, what's going on? First, I have my tangent, okay? So this is 
in orange is going to be my tangent. What is a tangent? Something that touches my, li my line at one point and then just keeps on going. See? So that would be at x equals 3. See? Right here is x equals 3. So that would be my tangent. What is my normal? My normal is perpendicular to my tangent. So this would be my normal, okay? So my normal is perpendicular to my tangent. That means two things. First of all, this now is all 90 degree angles between one and the other. And also because it is perpendicular, something I showed I think on number four if I'm not mistaken, or three, is that um, you have you have a couple types of lines, see? And in terms of slope, you have parallel lines and you have perpendicular lines, see? Just nice and quick, parallel lines have the same slope, so m1 equals m2, while perpendicular lines have a reciprocal slope, see? The fancy math language would be that m1 times m2 has to equal negative 1, okay? That is the fancy math language behind it. Uh, what I prefer to do is that really you just flip it and multiply by a negative 1, see? Or just by a negative. So let's say if my m1 is whatever, 2, and I say that my first slope is perpendicular to my second one, how do I find the second one? Well, first I flip the first one, ¿cierto? So I flip the 2, so 1 half, and I multiply it by a negative, see? So m2 in this case would be negative 1 half. So this would be perpendicular slopes, okay? Let's see what happens in the exercise down here. They tell us to find the equation of the normal to the curve, okay, so that would be, you know, the perpendicular thing and all that stuff. At 1, 2, in the form blah, blah, blah. So, what is actually kind of cool about this is that when you do the derivative of something, okay, you are now finding slope. What do we make this? Originally here, okay, you were finding sets of points. So, uh, what do I mean by this? If you plug in x, you would find a value for f of x. And this would help you plot lines on a graph, see? So this would be a bunch of sets of points. It would be like x and y, x and y, etc. See? You would get a bunch of different x and y's. When you have the derivative, it's a little bit different. Because now, when you plug in x, when you plug in x, you are asking, what is the slope at that point? At that x coordinate would be the very fancy way to put it. What is the slope at that x coordinate? See? This is after you do derivative, after derivative. See? When you plug in x, you are asking what is the slope at that coordinate. So if I go ahead and plug in 1 at derivative at my derivative version of my function, I am asking what is the slope when x equals 1. See? Why did I plug in 1? Because they are asking for the normal at 1, 2. See? So, um, I'm going to use this guy here. Dale. We have negative 2 times 1 to the power of negative 2 plus 6 to the power of 1. So, my first term is just going to be negative 2 divided by 1 squared. See? I'm applying the negative thing first. All right? plus simply 6. So what is 1 squared? Well, it is 1 times 1, which is just 1. So I end up with negative 2 over 1 plus 6. Same as negative 2 plus 6. Same as 4. So 4 is the gradient. See? Now it's the gradient of what? It is the slope of what? This would be the slope of ba -ba -da -ba, the tangent. See? So it would be the slope of the tangent, the guy in orange. To find the slope of the normal, which is in red, I need to flip it. Oops, let me put it in red so that, you know, I'm consi consistent. I need to flip it and do the negative. So, okay. So I'm going to flip it. So it's 1 over 4. And do the negative times negative 1. I end up with negative 1 over 4. 
So this here is going to be slope of normal. See? So I'm almost done with this exercise. I need to find the equation of the normal. See? To find the equation of a normal, there's a couple ways to create it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go to create. There. To find the equations of a straight line, I have three options. See? I have y equals mc mx plus c, ax plus y, well, whatever. I have three options, okay? The one that I suggest the most is the last one, see? It is called the point-slope formula. What do you need to make it work? You need the slope, and you need a set of points. If you have that, you are good to go. Where did I find this? In your formula booklet. The formula booklet you will be using the day of the test, so get familiar with it. All right, so... The, for, the point slope formula looked like this. Y equals, sorry, Y minus Y1 equals slope, parentheses X minus X1. Okay, so what set of points can I use? What is going on? Since they ask us at this point here, that is my X1, Y1 that I can use. So I can do Y minus Y1, get this two here, equals the slope, which I just found to be negative 1 over 4 parentheses x minus x1, which is just 1, and I can solve it from here, see? So I end up with y minus 2 equals negative 1 over 4x, because I just distributed, plus 1 over 4. Cool. Now, I'm not quite done yet, because they want us to put it in the form of this, see? This is called standard form. So there's two things going on. First of all, it all needs to be on one side. See? Notice that there's that zero on the right side. That means everything else goes on the left side. See? So we're going to do that first. And second of all, they all have to be an integer. See? The Z here means that it has to be an integer. What is an integer? It is whole numbers that can be negative. So an integer would mean negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. See? So it has to be whole numbers. All right. This step here, since I need to throw it on the left side and have it be in integers, okay, and have it be in integers, I suggest that you make it all integers right away. See, it'll make it easier to move stuff around, etc. blah, blah, blah. So, since I have fractions going on and they both have a denominator of 4, how can I get rid of a fraction? All you need to do is multiply by the denominator, period. So the denominator here is 4. So if I multiply everything by 4, things will happen. See, let's see what happens. For example, my first term, see, is going to be 4 times y. My second term is going to be negative 2 times 4. My third term is going to be uh, 4 times negative 1 over 4 times x. See? And this last one is going to be 4 times 1 over 4. And so what does multiplying by 4 do? Cierto? I end up um, getting rid of this guy with this guy and this guy with this guy. And suddenly it's a lot more easier to handle. So over here I end up with 4y. Over here I end up with negative 8. Over here I end up with negative x. Over here I end up with plus 1. And so since I needed everything on the left side, see, I'm going to go ahead and do plus x, plus x x plus 4y minus 8 equals uh, just 1, zero, positive 1. I need to have it equal to 0, so I do minus 1 on both sides. I end up with x plus 4y minus 9 equals 0. And that is how you turn into standard form. See? That is for number 9. Again, keep in mind how the derivative works, how it can be written as well. Cierto? understanding that when you plug in x you're asking what is the slope at that x coordinate it's a little bit different and lastly that the equation of the normal is this weird thing which is perpendicular to tangent okay if you want to memorize it that way the normal is perpendicular to the tangent to the tangent i'm not saying that it's intuitive but i am saying that you have to know it that is for number nine.